Stanton, we have Reginald Perriman, Shaka Williams, and we are Tasari. This is There's Something About Real Estate podcast where we talk all things real estate. What's up, guys? What's going on? What's up? Everything, everything, hey, no. everything, yo, everything. <laughs> That's my slogan. <laughs> say what's going on, say everything. Right? What's you going on, Justin? You all right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I didn't know I was supposed to say anything just yet. Yeah, I'm terrific. Right. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. We got with us today Justin Oliver, team lead of KW Metro, Metro. and City. City. KW Metro, KW City. Yeah, yeah. both of them. Yeah, Both of them. Yeah. 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 Big, doing big things out here in the world. Trying. <laughs> How are you? Uh, I am um, splendid. I'm feeling a little little gun shy and a little shell shocked. Uh, there's been a lot of stuff going on in the last oh, yeah. couple of days. Yeah. Uh, but no, I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Thanks for having me back. Oh, mm-hmm. no problem. Yeah, I love we, coming to do this. We wanted to bring you back on mainly to talk about your investments oh. and investing. Oh. Overall. Because last time we talked more about the real estate mm. business and the sales agent. Business. Now we want to get to the money, money. Okay, that one. <laughs> well, so uh, yeah, the, yeah. Well, that that, that the, it's it's an interesting balance being a licensed realtor, yep. and also being an investor, right? And I think a lot of a lot of real estate agents don't realize that you can actually do both very successfully and still maintain your obligation to the code of ethics, mm-hmm. and still maintain the protection of the consumer. Um, but yeah, I've had a I've had an interesting few months on the investment side of things because uh, is this thing date stamped? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So we so December December yeah. twenty twenty two. Yeah. Odd times in the old real estate world. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> All right. For sure. Yeah. Is it is it because of the investments themselves or is it because the market? I think it's a little bit of both. Okay. Uh, I think my odd times have been um, so I I I. I got a couple of little um, banana skins that I sat on um, that were a result of what happened over the last two and a half years. Mm, okay. And that, you know, we, we can talk about that in more detail, but I also think the market is is presenting unique challenges. And, I, and I'm a big believer in always being learning based and always making sure that you can uh, steer into the mm-hmm. skid and make sure that you're ahead of whatever's coming. Wayne Gretzky always used to say, I skate to where the puck's going, not where it is. And I'm trying to figure out that piece of the puzzle because I don't think really any of us know where the puck is going right, <laughs> right. now. Right. So, uh, no, it's, it's, been, it's been interesting. Ooh. Tell us um, a little bit about your experience as an investor. Give us a little background because you gave us a bunch of background last time, but I want, like, you know... Investor background. Investor, you know. because yeah, like, we learned about cruise ships and, yeah. and golf. He was doing all kind of furniture making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I've I've had a my my, my my resume is a is a novel at this point. I've done right. I've done a lot of stuff. Well, so I started in um in in 2018. I, I well, so I originally my first property I bought. I didn't even know I was an investor. I uh, I left home at a young age and, and I bought a a, a a two bedroom flat as they call them in this place called Ipswich in England. Lovely town, fa- fabulous football team. That Ter- sounds like a bad word. I- Ipswich? Yeah. He's saying a whole lot of stuff. Yeah. I, I was about to ask him what it meant, but I was not asking him afterwards. I- Ipswich, well, depending on where you come from, Ipswich can be a bad word. But, okay. it's, you know, <laughs> the, town, the town and the football club are great. Um, so, so I bought this two-bedroom flat there, and, and my mum co-signed it because she was desperate to get me out of the house. And uh, so I bought it on a mortgage. I paid £23,000 for it. And a year later, I sold it for £44,000. And I literally thought that, I mean... I, 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 I had, I had arrived. I was the most terrific thing ever since sliced bread. Um, and then I moved to London, and then I took all that profit, and I, and I burned out in London, and I disappeared around the world for a few years. And we've talked about that before. Um, we can put a little thing up here for that right. episode. I'll do that. Is that what that's what they do yeah, on, the, on, the, on the YouTube? Talk to our editors. Yeah. So go, go, go see these guys. We'll put a bar up here. Right. Um, but no, and I, and I, and I went and, and did a spectacular job of pissing all that money up the wall and, and had to start again. It was great. That. That property now, I, I I looked it up the other day, um, is now worth about 
eight hundred thousand pounds. Um, <laughs> did you did you like puke on yourself? Eight hundred thousand. <laughs> yeah. Like oh, oh my goodness, it doesn't even matter. So the twenty two thousand pounds that I made on it sort of seems like chump change right now. Yeah. Um, and and that, that was that was a bit of an interesting little little aha about maybe I shouldn't ever sell anything ever again. Mm. So anyway, fast forward. Uh, you, you can go and look at my life story in a, in another video. But the, the I started my um, my investment. My, my intentional investment journey in 2018. And I did it because I was a, I was living in Chicago at the time and, and I was a, a real estate agent in Chicago, 1099 contract and no pension, pretty much no hope of ever retiring ever because I was a, a paycheck to paycheck realtor. And, and I figured out this thing called Bigger Pockets and I was listening and everyone was mm -hmm. talking about investing. And my managing broker at the time suggested and, and turned, me, turned me on to this, this place called Champagne, which was two and a half hours uh, south of Illinois. And there was a university there, University of Illinois, the Fighting Il Illini or whatever yeah. they call them. Um, that's apparently a good thing. And there were four <laughs> big businesses that, that were anchored there. So there was a Tate and Lyle distribution plant. Uh, in the next door town, John Deere had a manufacturing facility. Cat had a manufacturing facility. And um, Tate and Lyle, Cat, John Deere, there's one other. It will come to me. And then, so there's one other big industry in that area. So it seemed like a really good, it's like a blue collar town. And so I went down there and I was driving for dollars and, and I saw a for sale by owner and and called him up and, and said, hey, uh, I was listening to the Bigger Pockets podcast yeah. as I was driving down. And there was this thing called seller financing. Now, I'd never heard of that because that wasn't something that we used right. in my retail business of selling glass boxes in the sky in downtown Chicago to CEOs and other bits and pieces. So I drive down, this podcast's on, I call this person up, I say, hey, I, you know, I'm just down looking at, at opportunities, like, can you show me the home? And, and, and she showed up and she showed it. And I said, well, what if I give you a check for five, randomly, I said, what if I give you a check for $500 and uh, and then I pay you a 6% interest rate over the next 20 years? And she went, okay, and put her hand out like that. And, and I shook it and I was like, that's cool. And then I got back in my car and I drove back. And about an hour back into the drive of Chicago, I was like, what the hell did I just do? Like, I just completely bought a house. And it all sort of snowballed from there. Um, and um, interestingly enough, that was that was 2018. If I look at where I am now to there, we're four, four and a half years, plus or minus. I look at some of the stuff I listen to on Bigger Pockets, yeah. and it just it kind of makes me feel not ashamed, but it definitely makes me realize that I really stalled out after that initial kind of explosive start. Right. I really stalled out compared to where I should be right now. Now, right. there was that whole, you know, global pandemic thing that happened mm -hmm. right. in the midst of it, but that was how I got started. That's um, crazy. Right. Yeah. You just started investing in 2018 and you, right. you, you were far. You're far as hell yeah, uh, for investing in four years. Yep. I, I'm getting there, but then I look at, at people in the invest the investor sphere, the social media, the, the people that are out there sharing it a lot. Yeah. Not the gurus, just the people that are sharing their stories. Right. And I look at some people that have actually achieved financial freedom in four years right. or five years. Mm. And I'm sitting there looking at it thinking, God, I'm so far behind the curve. But I've learned a lot because right. I've, I've hit a couple of um, banana skins along the way and, mm -hmm. and I've had a couple of oopsie doos and, and I've... I mean, I've literally bootstrapped this thing. You know, I, I started this thing with 500 bucks and that's right. pretty much all I've put into it. So what do you mean that you're behind? So what are you basing it off of that you're behind? People, you're saying social media people? Yeah, I mean, when, when you focus on some of the bigger pocket stuff, like, right. you know, there's this one person I follow, uh, Investor Girl Brit. Mm -hmm. I, I don't, I'm not entirely sure of her time scale, but she's done so much more than I ever have in, in the time that I've got. Now, granted, I relocated my whole family to Michigan in that time and we had a baby and and I inherited a big real estate business right. and, that I'm now running. And so there was a lot of other things that went on, but I haven't hit that financial freedom number, which is my target. Mm. And that's what I mean right. by being behind. Gotcha. Do you still have that property? You said that's in Champaign, yeah. Illinois. Yeah. Just, okay. Yeah, one one oh one. I'm not gonna give the address. No. But uh, <laughs> the, uh, that is still to this day the best, most trouble free asset that I own. It has cash flowed every single month, and I actually I've refinanced it twice since 2018, and I've pulled more money out of it in terms of cash on, like cash out refis right. than was on the original purchase agreement. Mm. And it was way more than the 500 bucks that I wrote to buy the place. And it's cash flowed every single month. And I, I just pulled another 18 grand out of it um, about three weeks ago. 
Wow. So when you say you um, should be further, I, I go through that too, because you're looking at where somebody with similar skill set or around your experience. Or less. Or less, or less yeah. <laughs> and they, and well, they, I, was, I wasn't going to say that, but yeah. see, that's how you did. Well, it's, it's our show. We, we keep it <laughs> they real. Be it's, less. Real, they be less. It's crazy. I, they're, just, I, yeah. they're that scared. I, yeah. Ahead, right. I, I, I do like to think I know more than most people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And maybe that's yeah. to my detriment. Mm -hmm. Do you, yeah, because do you think you, you probably don't overanalyze, but sometimes you like, you'll pass up on a deal. It doesn't meet your formula. And you pass up on it, somebody else get it, and you're like, damn, they made it. They I look work. at my, uh, yeah, I look at my buy box, and then I look at some things that I've said no to that I know the person that has bought it, or I go and follow the path of the property. Yeah. And I, I, I I'm sitting, I constantly sit there and think, do I need to reevaluate my buy box? Right. Uh, and I, I've tried to get out of my comfort zone because my 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 buy box originally was a three one or a two one ranch because I could get into it really easily. Yep. It's incredibly rentable in the markets that I was looking at, and right. it is in the ones here I'm now trying to expand into. And my whole thing was I can get in and get out on the burst strategy for really next to nothing. Right. And what I've realized now is that maybe it's okay to use my track record and have bigger conversations around bigger projects. And that's what I'm trying to move into now. Okay. I got a question because yep. I hate two ones. I used to always, I, I would never buy a two bedroom or bathroom, right? right? But I have recently, yeah. which is crazy. I would right? never do it for a flip. Yeah. I, no, I, yeah. I hated them for everything though. I was two one. They said, how many bedrooms is it? Two bedrooms. I don't want nothing to do with it. But uh, just recently I started taking mm -hmm. on two bedrooms, which is, well, one. One two bedroom. Yeah, yeah. Two two bedrooms. Well, but the one is by default because the wall was taken down. Right. True. So, you put, <laughs> put, so the selling is a two one, the wall's taken down. You put the wall back up, you exactly. know, yeah. three one, and yeah, there yeah. you go. That's an instant mm -hmm. value add. Mm -hmm. And for a lot of the two ones, you can normally create a third bedroom, mm -hmm. but a two one is a very rentable property. And yeah. my strategy is uh, this all started out as being a pension, right? Mm -hmm. So I wanted to start investing and holding. I, my goal was to cash flow, if I could, a hundred bucks a door. Okay. That was all I was looking for. When all was said and done, <clears throat> after I burred it mm -hmm. and hopefully took a little bit of profit on the on the burr, because right. when I take the profit out, it's it's debt, so you don't pay tax, tax on free. it. That's right. cool. Right. Mm -hmm. um, I only figured that one out about six months ago. <laughs> Who knew? That's a whole other story. Because um, I was thinking, oh, I got a 1031 the profit when I do right. my cash out refinance. And then somebody said to me, no, no, it's debt. It's debt. Thank, right. you. <laughs> thank you. At, at, at Brad Kiger, thank you. Um, <laughs> but it's, like, like, yeah, when I figured that out, I was like, oh, holy shit, now I'm going to start pulling equity out of everything yep. because now I can just use it. But the, the, for me, the, the, the two one was. It's a really rentable property. It just turns right. over a little bit quicker than a three one. Mm -hmm. um, your standard ranch in my area is is a is a is a two one or a three one. Mm. And the barrier to entry into those, I mean, the second property I bought, the first one I bought, I bought with a five hundred dollar check. The second one I bought with no money down, um, and I did it on uh, on private money. Mm -hmm. I paid twenty five grand for it. I put twenty into it. And the ARV on that, or it, it, it appraised when we came to refinance it at 75 grand. Mm. And that to me right. makes sense because, you know, they become almost unmortgageable. Mm -hmm. And you've got to do it with with either cash or private money. And then you can put the note on when you increase the value. But the two two ones rent so well. Mm -hmm. Like the one right. I just I just finished a construction project now, and it was a duplex which had a two one and a one one. The two one went like that. In the duplex, I would I would agree. I yeah, just didn't like the resale of the two one on a residential. Mm. Yeah, but I, 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 I understand like you was paying long term. I, I, I just was I, I was hedging no my bet. plan on selling it. Right, I made the mistake of selling real estate. It does. It hurts, right? Yeah, yeah. Eight hundred grand. Eight hundred grand. Yeah, that was. That, yeah, no, 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 no. No, no but I get no, it. We don't. We don't talk. About Do you that. find it's less maintenance with the two one? Maintenance as in ongoing to, costs. Yeah. Well. Because you're not gonna get a family of six living there, right. right? In most cases, so do you feel like it's less wear and tear, and maintenance? In my experience, to... it has been very similar with a two one or a three one. Okay. Um, right. My 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 big maintenance headaches currently are actually my multi units. Yeah. Oh, so, right. um, but yeah, my my the the single family, and I, I'm I'm looking now because I I just had my fingers burned a little bit on a on a multi unit. Um, my finger, my, my my thought process now is to go back to 
doing the single families and build up a big bank of those right. so that I can put the cash in, burr out with a little profit and recoup right. the cash reserves that I just lost on a deal that I did. Mm. Okay. So. Want to talk about the deal you just lost <laughs> <my deal? sighs> Hold That's on. what the drink is for. Let me, yeah, let me just... Let me just well, so to be fair, I didn't actually lose I money. I was about to say, how? Okay, yeah. I didn't make as much money as I thought. Oh, Let's okay. put it that okay. way. Yeah. So okay. I bought uh, in... Uh, it was it was the th it was the third property I bought in Champagne, and it was a... Uh, I found it on the MLS. It was a, a duplex, yeah. but it was a it was a 2-1 on the front with a coach house in the back, mm. which was a 1-1. One, one. So it's two separate units on, right. on one parcel. Oh, you should have been Airbnb in that. Champagne didn't sound like it was nothing there. Apparently, no, uh, there's a university there. <laughs> yeah, oh, apparently, yeah, university, what I should have yeah. done was know you four years ago, and I should have been Airbnb there, right? <laughs> right. Um, so, uh, so we bought this thing. This, this was a wreck. I bought it sight unseen. It was on the MLS, and I sat and watched it and watched it and watched it and watched it and watched it. And it sat and sat and sat, and it went from 55 grand down to 45. And so I just, I just wrote a sight unseen offer, 100% seller financed for like 30 grand. They counted back, which I wasn't expecting them to do, at 100% seller financed at 36 right. with a $3,000 prepayment settlement if we didn't hold the, the seller finance note for the right. life of it. Hmm. Okay. To okay. Which, yeah. This was in what year? <laughs> this was in 2019. Oh, okay. To which I oh, went. That was good. Right? Yeah, 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 to which I went. That's a, that's a, this has been sick. That's a terrific right. deal. Absolutely. Signed the paper, picked up the keys, went to the property, and was like, oh my. Fucking star, what did you just do? And I mean, this place was a dump, but it was, it wasn't, it had good bones. Right. It was in a great location. And uh, it was my, my lender at the time that I was working with, who had just done the cash out refinance on the one that I bought for 25 mm -hmm. and put a few bucks into it. And it ended up being like 75 when we were all said and done. He said to me that he would <clears throat> float me the, um, it's actually a private bank. It wasn't a private lender. They said to me they would float me the construction money. Right. And then COVID hit and they got really into the PPP loans. Oh. And they mm. weren't, he told me he wasn't going to do that anymore. Right. So now I'm scrambling and now I'm in the middle of a pandemic and I can't get anybody to go and do the work. So we just sat on it. Wait, so you didn't take out the PPP? <laughs> sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> I did take out a PPP loan, but we don't talk about that. <laughs> um, because uh, I also managed to take out the PPP loan and not get that forgiven. So I'm, um, I'm really I'm really winning at life on this one. Right. Um, wow. So uh, so I, I did take out, I, I got, I got $7,000 of PPP money from the SBA. Um, and... And uh, well, it, wasn't, gonna... it wasn't forgiven. Just... <laughs> <laughs> but you didn't get like fifty million dollars in oh, PPP. No, no, like... no, 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 I didn't, my, 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 you didn't my, buy no uh, jet with I'm it. Still mad about the PPP. I felt like I was jolted. No, <laughs> it, I, I mean I, the whole that whole thing was crazy. But um, so yeah, so so I'm sitting on it, and, I'm, and, and my tax bill on this thing is like twenty five hundred bucks a year. So. Um, we, I, I drove to, to um, Urbana and smashed the toilet mm. um, to make it completely unlivable to try and get some sort of credit on the on the um, on, on the tax, but that didn't work either. So fast forward, now I'm now I'm sitting here with holding this thing, holding this thing, holding this thing. I, I ended up holding it for two years. This was, we bought it in 2019. What are we now? 2022. Mm -hmm. yep. We finished the construction on that uh, about four weeks ago. Wow. So eventually the loan officer that was attached to the bank that I was working on eventually quit. And I got this phone call out of the blue from somebody else from First Neighbor Bank. Am I allowed to say names? No, no I wanted to hear that. That's oh, what I was going to ask you. What's the name of the bank? So, so I got this phone call. <laughs> and I, the second they called me, I'm like, oh, God, I probably owe them money or I've missed a payment or whatever. And she's like, oh, hey, I'm your new loan officer. I'm like, great. You know that construction loan that's on my file? Right. Can I have it? And that went on, that went on. And they, that, it ended up being that they wouldn't lend on it. Mm. So now I'm completely stuffed. So I go and put a HELOC on my house to get the money out to go because I'm sitting on this thing for so long. And it, it didn't cost me anything to carry because I had thirty six thousand dollars in in seller finance note. My my payment was one hundred and sixty one, one hundred and sixty three mm. bucks, I think. So that was fine. Right. But the tax was twenty five hundred a year. So I went and, and took a HELOC out and uh, did the renovations. But the cost of everything had 
doubled. Right. I mean, the cost of materials. Right. Mm -hmm. I, I needed furnaces. I needed. I mean, this. I needed everything. Right. And my contractor was just licking his lips. I mean, he must have been thinking this one board every minute. Mm -hmm. So my 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 cost. I mean, went through the roof, and then my appraisal because we didn't manage to get it done by May of this year mm. when everything was terrific and yeah. tremendous. Mm -hmm. yeah. We were now, I got it refinanced in November of this mm. year. So my cost estimate of 2019 for the ARV was going to be 150. Mm -hmm. My cost estimate in May of this year was going to be 190. My appraisal came in at 140. Mm. Mm. Wow. So I did. It's not that I necessarily lost, lost money. Right. I didn't get just to pull didn't out what you wanted. Much, I didn't right. quite make. But we since then the two one the one one we've rented both of those units since November, and the tenants are moving in in the next couple of weeks for the holidays, and and that's it, it's all, it's all worked out. But um, I definitely had to put out more money than I was expecting, and um, I've done some other things in the meantime, which just means that what I was hoping to take out of that and put back into my HELOC, I'm not. So now I've got to figure out how I replace my how HELOC. You replace right. it. But I'm going to talk That's about something like real quick. That's why I like sitting on properties and just like having them sit. Janita kind of is, get, I, I'm horrible with that. Yeah, you know? I, I got to get them moving, get mm -hmm. something going on with them. Because like if you would have did that process a year ago, mm -hmm. that was 190 versus 140. Yep. Yeah. Right. And you would have had income coming in already. A year ago. The, the problem is this, though. I'm, you have I'm to think. Really, of, I'm really enjoying him telling no, me. All these yeah, no, no, no. <laughs> no I'm just saying. Like, it's, like, it's, like it's like a big fight. I, I don't feel bad face. about it because uh, the only reason that I will do that is because I'm making more money somewhere else. That's the only reason. It's not. It'd be different if I'm sitting there slacking Whoa. and I'm just not doing it. But if right. I'm using my time to make more, more money somewhere else, then Whoa. it is what it is. So. Thanks for But you're that. talking you... from a contractor standpoint. I'm talking about period. Yeah. I'm talking about life oh, period. Because I'm talking about my flips. Like even even the house that when we started talking about that house, I still right. ain't got the house yet. But so, I'm going to go get it. You know what I mean? I just haven't done it yet. To that point, and thank you so much for saying that. Mm. Right. Uh, this is another area where I absolutely fucked up. Mm. Because I decided that I was sitting on an asset that wasn't performing and it made sense for me to not do anything until I got that one performing. So I froze for okay. like 18 months. I did mm -hmm. nothing for 18 months. Mm -hmm. And that that was when I was waiting for the bank, waiting for the bank, waiting for the pandemic, waiting for the bank, waiting on everybody. We have this fantastic phrase at, at, at uh, the brokerage that I'm with uh, of you can have reasons or results. <laughs> yeah. Man, do I, I have reasons. <laughs> and I <laughs> sat and I sat and I sat and I was, I was literally, I'm not gonna do anything because I'm paying all this money out and I'm not making anything. And I mean, let's not forget, I kind of bootstrapped my investment mm -hmm. business. I'm not backed by millions of dollars. I hadn't figured out how to have the right conversations with the right people to raise the money. And and so I was, re I really kind of felt on my own about mm -hmm. it. And I wasn't going to do anything until I could get that one performing. And so it froze me for 18 months. Mm. So not only did I not make money, but I also lost money. Well, you probably needed Good. it right off anyway. Let me, let me ask you something. You <clears throat> mentioned um, not being able to have the conversations with the right people to raise money mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. is it that you don't feel like you have the right conversation or you don't have the right people to have the conversation with yes both <laughs> absolutely at All the right. time going going back to that going back to the beginning of the pandemic at the time and and there's no other way to say this other than sounding like a completely arrogant prick at the time i didn't realize what i knew and i didn't realize how good i was and mm. i didn't i was still in the mindset at that moment in time mm -hmm. that I needed the money, right. not that the money needed the deal. And I think we talked about this the last time I was here yeah. about the, the the big switch that went off in my head right. where I suddenly <clears throat> realized there was more money out there than there were deals that could that could function the mm -hmm. money. Right. And when I was going to people and uh, the, 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 the deal I did before buying the duplex, the private money, I did it 25%. Mm. Because right. I felt like I needed the money. Now right. I would never do a deal. It's well. Oh, right. you were paid twenty five. I paid twenty five percent on the money. 
Yeah, we, we, shit. I mean, we were talking about... <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he's like, what do you mean? I'm doing no, a deal no, with you right no, now. No, no, I mean, we... No, we, we do. Yeah. We pay 20, 24.99%. But we don't count other people's money. We use other people's money, but we also do not count other people's money as long as our profit margin is where it's supposed to be. Mm. Well, and that's where it worked out because the, the 25% was... It wasn't, uh, it, it wasn't in any way amortized. It was a single payment at the end. It was a three-month loan... And, you know, they gave me 25 and I, I gave them 25 plus 25 back. Mm. And that was it. You know, it wasn't, there wasn't any payment. So I was able to carry that that property for really nothing out of pocket while we were doing the work and all the other bits and pieces. Three but, months, 25%? Yeah. Oh. Nice we're not doing that. Mm-mm. That was it. it was, Maybe my like 10%. No, no, no. For three, what's for your, three months? What's your no, loan? We, three months? Is, or you did it? You oh, yeah. In three months. That no, I, the, the, the person that lent me fair. that money, mm-hmm. I'd set it up that, that I'm not going to make any payments. Right. And I'll have your money back plus 25% interest in three months. Oh. Yeah. So no. you're paying 100% in a year. So, so, this you, is, hey, you, so for me, that's the one thing. If I'm doing a short term loan, I'm not giving you as much interest. You gotta give me eight months. Yeah. Right. yeah. You gotta give me. But I will say that second one that we did at 25% is probably the second best deal I've ever done. Mm. Mm-hmm. Because that one, I mean, the I've just in the equity I've got in that one on its own, right. never mind about the cash flow and all the other bits and pieces that have come from it. And our, our, our rehab costs were ended up being way less than we thought, mm-hmm. um, and we and I, I bootstrapped the, the 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 refinance. I funded it out of pocket, and we we refinanced that one. And I made after paying the twenty five percent and getting my cash back, I made right. ten grand on that one, and that has cash flowed month on month on month. It's a really really nice house. That was where I figured out what I need to do. What, what I wanted to do was to find B and C class neighborhoods and do really, really nice quality homes right. that people would want to live in. And that gave me really, really good long-term tenants and great cash flow. And I could do it very cheaply by using great materials that looked great, but maybe weren't, you haven't got to put like Wolf and Sub-Zero and all the rest of it. You can put really, really good quality and create a nice visual and a nice home and people will want to live there. So I had a big aha with that one as well. Um, but there was still that when I got to the duplex that, that we're still effing around with now, um, the, the reality of that was, 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 was very different. I didn't want to go and buy something else when this wasn't producing because I felt like I needed to, I'd, I'd, I'd listened to all these podcasts. I figured out yeah. the Burr method and I, and I, oh, it all made sense, <laughs> but I hadn't done it. I'd done it on the two before, but I still had this one sitting and, and I didn't have and I didn't have the money to do the duplex. I didn't I wasn't able to do it and I needed the loan. And in, in the end, um I I I I have no idea why it took me this long to come to the realization. I was listening to a podcast and they were like, HELOC, it's a great thing yep. to do. And I looked at my mortgage and I looked at the zestimate of my house. God, I can't believe I even did that. And I looked at the two and I was like, Whoa! Right. And, and that was it and so I you know and I spoke to my wife and I'm like hey look I, I need to do this and, and this is how I can get this thing moving more importantly when I get the money back into the HELOC this is going to give me the money I need to really get this thing right. rolling mm-hmm. um, and, and she signed off on it and off we went I want to I want to I want Justin to explain something because everybody doesn't understand what seller financing is and right. especially people in this market because yeah. you're not getting a lot of seller financing going on right. here so the fact that he's got multiple deals right doing seller financing is crazy I had everything I did um for the for the longest period well so my my the next deal after the duplex that's really interesting because not only did I I had a um a conventional loan on it but the down payment, the twenty percent, was seller finance. Wow! So yeah. seller financing is 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 effectively where the seller holds the note. The seller becomes the bank, and I, and I think, you know, we're in twenty twenty two right now. We're in a, a crazy um, time where we're on the back of a huge blip. We're on the back of a pandemic. A crazy, um, uh, you know, sellers driven market, and and um, interest rates are going nuts. And I think seller financing is going to become a really key strategy for anybody buying. Real estate. It's very simply um, the, the 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 person that holds the equity holds the note. They're the bank. Uh, yeah, exactly. Right. They become the bank and they dictate the terms. And the nice thing is, it's outside of Fannie and Freddie guidelines. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. You you can literally negotiate across a table like mm-hmm. like we're all sitting here mm-hmm. today, 
And um, if it works for you and it works for me, great. That note, um, that, that, that negotiation forms a promissory note. That promissory note gets recorded against the title at closing. So it is a, it is a mortgage. A mortgage right? And if uh, I default on the payment, the person who holds that note has the right, if the terms dictate it in the contract of the promissory note, to foreclose on the property. Mm -hmm. right. So they literally become the bank. A lot of um, the misnomer that I find in this area is that people think the seller can somehow just come and take the property. Mm -hmm. no. And I've, I have to tell people all the time, like, if anyone has told you that or if you have a land contract with someone and, you know, they're just telling you to, to leave, understand that you do have rights and they can't just do that. They have to foreclose on yeah. you. Right. But, like, a lot of times that's the fear. People kind of, at least here from my experience, it's kind of like, oh, no, you know, that's bad. That's really bad. And yeah. they can just come and take my property. That's well, like it's an it's urban it. myth because yeah. people wasn't educated properly. Yeah. And too many people were doing them without the proper professionals helping. Mm -hmm. so but they, there's, there's, there's two urban myths. Mm -hmm. The two urban myths are that the seller can just come in anytime they want and take the keys back. Right. And that the buyer um, can default and not be foreclosed on and mm -hmm. it doesn't matter and doesn't affect them. Mm -hmm. Both of those are wrong. Right. right. It is a mortgage. It, the only difference is it's outside of Fannie and Freddie guidelines. Right. And you can negotiate the terms, and the terms can be as outlandish as you want as long as the buyer and the seller both agree to them. Right. right. But you have a lawyer or an attorney draw up a promissory note right. which gets recorded against the title. Like, for example, right now, that, that duplex that we were talking about, that was purchased on a seller finance note. Right. And now we have to settle, when we close the refinance, we have to settle the payoff with the seller. Mm -hmm. Well, who'd have thought the seller would have been difficult to get hold of? Mm, yep. And the, <laughs> my refinance is currently delayed uh, because we can't get hold of the seller. Mm. And it, but you know I'm paying him every month, but it, yep. it, it's I, fi I figure the one way to get hold of him is just to stop paying him. He'll right. start They're answering the right. right. away from the payoff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. but but the, we, we we got hold of him. It, it took a while. We got hold of him, but it, it, that's going to close next week. But the um, yeah, it's 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 no different than any secured mm -hmm. loan. And the nice thing is anyone can do it. And from an investment standpoint, anybody can hold the note. There are investors that buy notes. Yeah. yeah. That will that will yeah. literally buy a note if they can make if they can make a point on the money. Mm -hmm. Um it, it's 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 a it's a real vehicle. Mm -hmm. And at the moment in our market, the smart people are looking at this is not only a real thing, but this is a real thing to add terrific value to a seller yep. and to a buyer because now I can cut the banks and their mortgage rates out of a deal. Mm, right. And I can go and sell my property with a 4 or 5% interest rate, which I refinanced onto a 2% interest rate in the beginning of this year. So I'm making two points on the money. Mm -hmm. The buyer's making three points on the money because they're not paying 7%. Everybody wins. Mm -hmm. And we get a transaction. So we argue. Well, y'all about to say that. We yeah. argue. Because yeah. 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 I do a lot of land contracts. I sell. I buy and sell on, on land contracts. Different market now, though. Right. So but I, still, I, 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 go ahead. What, what we was arguing was over the the concept of it. Mm -hmm. The idea we gave a scenario. Somebody may have bought a house for two hundred thousand. Now it's worth four hundred thousand. This is somebody that has absolutely no plans to spend the extra money. Mm -hmm. They're probably just going to sit in a bank or retirement mm -hmm. account. It would make sense for them to just sell it on seller financing mm -hmm. and get the collected interest because they wasn't going to do anything with the money anyway, but let it sit somewhere in somebody's money market account or something. Seller financing makes so sense. Listen, but, but let me tell you so why I disagree with it. Well, 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 right. no, go and on, they can no, like, sell the note. I'm going to sit as no. judge. Let me hear about well, the well, So we were talking, about, we, we, we talked about this maybe either earlier this year or towards yeah. the end of last year. And so if you were in that situation now, you lost equity in your house, most likely. How? Uh, for the same reason you just said. And when you went uh, last year or earlier this year, uh, it might have been at 400000 but now it's at three fifty. But if I only pay two hundred for it, mm. it, it you, don't matter. I didn't uh, lose. But you still, it's the same thing that you said. Right. It's, it's, it's the exact same thing, which is the reason why I was saying it then. Uh, when the market was high, sky high, mm -hmm. 
you sell. That's how you're taught. Mm -hmm. Buy low, sell high. Yeah, but anybody that tries to time the real estate market is never going to But we it. knew. I mean, so we, 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 saw, it, we, we all saw it coming. Yeah, you yeah. talk about people right. who've been investing. Right. We we understand that, it, yeah, it was going up. but It wasn't too much more higher it can go. Fair right? enough. It was going to uh, taper off. So that's my point. My, so I hear what Reggie is saying. But, but, uh, wait, but hold on. But he, you're, holding, you're holding a note. Correct, but, and he just and so the equity is on is the burden of the buyer. It is right. So the buyer, mm -hmm. so the so the four hundred thousand dollar house that was worth four hundred thousand that's mm -hmm. now worth three fifty. Mm -hmm. Okay, a buyer comes in and says, "I'll give you twenty percent down, and then I'll do I'll do a note with you." And and again, all right. Previously, it was like two point five percent, so mm -hmm. it's not right now. Mm -hmm. So the seller financing aspect in the retail market works right now yes because we can undercut the bank 100%. and make a home more saleable if we couldn't then though when when you're at the peak of the market and mm -hmm. interest rates are really low and people are looking at getting a 2.5 percent fixed mm -hmm. it doesn't make any sense for the seller then that's what we we're arguing it well, makes no. sense for the seller it still now. makes sense for the seller because just because the bank notes are at a lower rate at that time, doesn't mean that the... You can still negotiate a higher rate. Exactly. But if, if, there's if, there's somebody that doesn't qualify, if there's somebody that doesn't qualify for exactly. the higher rate, right. yeah. exactly. or doesn't qualify for a mortgage in, in But typically, period. that's why you would risk. be doing... That's, 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 that's why you would be doing seller financing in those industries anyway, because but here's, those people don't here's qualify. What we was, here's what we was arguing with. Because I've used a scenario, someone paid maybe like 200 for a home, and now it's worth 400 or 450 or whatever, Right. And they had 200, 250 in equity after they paid off their mortgage, for example. His argument was, why would you sell a finance when you could personally take that 200 or 250 and make way more money with it than what you could if you were charging interest by selling it on land contract or seller financing? Mm -hmm. The point I was making is still a good option because the average person is not going to do a lot with that money. They're just going to sit it in some, some mutual fund or some Vanguard account or something like that. When they got money here, that's not really... If I lock you in at 400000 at 6% interest, I'm locked in, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Versus putting it in the market, that can change next week. But yeah. only, this, so, all, all of this only works if the home is owned free and clear. Right. Because yeah. if there is an existing note, I mean, set of financing is off the table. Right. right. Yeah, it's right. not even legit. So, so, so if, technically. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, yeah. unless you're right. going to do a subject to yeah. or any right. of the other. But we're saying yeah. the home is paid off right. at this point. Okay. So, so, if, so you sell the home, mm -hmm. you get your 400 grand. Mm hmm. And then what are you going to go do with it? I'm going to go make 400 more. Well, I know you are. That's yeah. what I'm saying. That, right. Yeah, like everybody. So you you would be what you call an outlier. Like if you go into a group of people, the the odds of people, like it's going to be more people in that group that's scared to do anything mm -hmm. in particular. And I yeah, take $400,000 and go try to flip it. Oh, we're doing that talking about flipping it. So, you, well, you are talking so, about flipping no, it. No, no, no. Hold you, on. Do you want to answer the question? Do you want to know where the real power in the seller financing is? Mm -hmm. This is what I think. Right. And this may, may or may not be right, but it is. So <laughs> <laughs> the real power in seller financing, I believe, relates to retiring landlords. Yep. Mm. Because yep. a landlord bought a property in order to cash flow from it mm -hmm. and to get the residual benefits, the six streams of income that you can get from one property. Right. right? And I'm a big proponent of those six streams. I always talk about them six streams of income. We did that on the last one. Um, right. But when you have a retiring, when you've got a retiring landlord, right. there are two things they want. They either want to cash out completely or they still want the passive income. Well, if I can target a retiring landlord and offer them a seller finance deal that makes sense to them where they're still cash flowing from the investment, which was the original reason they bought it, right? now everybody's winning. And, and, they I'm don't fine have the and they're getting a lump sum of money. Win, they, they have, they have, the, they've got none of the liability, right. none of the responsibility. They're getting yep. paid every month. And even if they don't, they get the asset back at the full equity stake. Mm -hmm. They get it back. They foreclose on it. I get a better rate. I fly under right. Fannie and Freddie's radar. I'm not holding all these mortgages. They win. I win. It's 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 a good deal. Beautiful. Yeah. Right. Uh, so so yes. I guess we can argue on both sides where it makes right. sense to do either of them. But I'm just saying overall, 
even if you weren't, especially then, we were we were still at the three percent interest rates. Then. Right. So you were only going to be at around like five percent, maybe max six percent, because somebody would said you was price gouging at six percent, right? Because you double. No, I'm I just negotiate. saying. I negotiated six percent. I mean, the one I wrote for you was eight and a half percent. Yeah. And that was when the rates was at two point eight. But this yeah. is because that. So <laughs> hold on. So but we, we're talking about uh, them type of people. Well, yeah, that's what I'm about to say. You got to understand the yeah. risk. Right. They ain't paid me in six months. You know what I mean? Yeah. You no, know. My, my people. My people. <laughs> the last one I did. Yeah, was, yeah, but, but I'm saying that was a high And risk. now you can yeah. take your property. So to Justin's point, now you can go take your property back. Yeah. That property is worth more than it was that date they signed the land contract, mm-hmm. and you can sell so, it. So my right. point is this. Um, for that person that we're talking about, mm-hmm. so not only would they be scared to lose equity uh, right. in the house, because so... At, on the same token, what y'all are talking about, you got to be us to think that way on their side as well. Right. You, Why are you not, losing uh, equity? I'm confused about yeah, that's losing what I'm equity. Saying. <laughs> the same way that you just lost equity. No, because you know, when you sell it, you get the down payment, mm-hmm. and then you get the payment in perpetuity, which means that if you're if you're plus getting, the interest, no, yeah, no, plus the interest. Right. Hold on. So, Justin, you just had so in your mind when you bought that house, you had it at one hundred ninety thousand dollars. Correct. Right. Mm-hmm. So you had let's say you seventy five, you had a hundred. And fifteen thousand in equity, mm-hmm. and then it came back at one hundred and forty. So mm-hmm. now you only got sixty five thousand dollars in equity. So you just lost equity. But not really if no. you only paid thirty six for no, the house. No, he no, just no, lost if, equity. There's no right, getting but, around but, it. Y'all can try to change it. But if when I analyzed it, because mm-hmm. you you analyzed the deal, <laughs> you guys, you you analyzed the deal. I want to tell you a secret. You analyzed right. the deal mm-hmm. based on the market. That you're buying the deal, mm-hmm. in, right? I right. Did, I so, agree. so I analyzed it at 190. Now, if I'd have sold it at 190, then yeah, I would have realized the down payment and the seller financed all the other governments and all the other. Mm-hmm. What we're talking about is the fact that I sat on a property for two years, mm-hmm. and globally everything got really, really fucked up, mm-hmm. and um. Everything changed, but it's still increased. But I don't. At that but I don't. I don't know that I necessarily agree because if you got an appraisal, that was a person that did the appraisal, and that was based on that value was based on their opinion. I wonder had you had a second appraisal, what that number would have come in at? Uh, that's a very interesting point. Yeah. And I never had a second appraisal, but they did also base it. They, they, they I got my three, uh, my three valuation. Um, what do they call those? The, 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 yeah, the, yeah. Well, no, I, I, they did this. Right. The, they did the, the the seller comps. They did the and it's the value. Bank. Oh yeah, that shows the appraisal. Yeah. It was gonna be hard. But to no, do it was not hard because I just did this. What I'm saying is, if any time any of you are gonna do a refinance on a property, pay for. Go through two different financial institutions and pay for two or three appraisals. Everybody don't have that money. You that's got, what I'm saying. That's fine. Right. That's but I'm thing. talking to Justin right now. Yeah, but... That's fine. It's ways around everything, but... It's great, and yeah. that's with the podcast. So I'm trying to... If I can be allowed to speak, I'm giving <laughs> a secret. Hedge your bet and pay... If you can afford 600 times two or three... Pay for more than one appraisal and get a second or third opinion before you close. Gotcha. I would I would actually say that is a very, very clever, um, sensible way to do that. We, um, I didn't do that because I was also under the gun a little bit to get it, yeah, get it done. refinanced mm-hmm. and get my money out so I can move into because I got something else that I want to push that money into. Right. I don't think that the appraisal would have been fifty grand different. It might have been ten. But I don't think it was going to be 50. Right. But that's my point. But I guess my thing is, I'm just more so challenging the fact. Did you really lose equity or did that appraiser give you? This idiot is telling me about losing (laughs) equity. I I still don't know what he's talking about. He definitely lost equity. I I didn't lose out. He lost the opportunity of getting 190, but he still got 140. No, 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 I didn't. No, I didn't. No, 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 I didn't. No, I absolutely didn't. I lost the opportunity of getting 190 now. Right now, yeah, exactly. The, diff- the difference right. being, uh, so when I analyzed it, I anticipated mm-hmm. that I was going to get X based on CMAs. Based you on, did your own. CMA, I, did, right? I did my own CMAs. Mm-hmm. I did my own due diligence. Did you, did you fuck up on your CMAs? No, I did not. Oh, so my so CMAs you, were you was pretty solid on your one ninety. I listen. I am the greatest realtor. That's oh, okay. Did you, right. CMA, is, so. did you do a CMA? Did you do a CMA? 24 months ago, or did you do a CMA right when you were also getting your appraisal? Both. And you saw that the numbers were still valid? No. He I, knew that he I, lost I, equity. I, That's the I, point. I, I anti- no, hold, no, because I haven't. Shush. I, it, was, it, was, it was 190 when I bought it. It was 170 
when I analyzed it and the appraisal okay. came in like at, at 140. Mm. Now, I don't see that as losing 50 grand. You, I didn't say you, you lost equity. Now you can regain equity. You understand that. I, you I, know you can you can lose. Yeah, equity I haven't. I have And regain it. I haven't lost anything. If the if the house at one point was worth 190 thousand mm. dollars, but now the house is worth 140 thousand dollars, <laughs> what happened? No matter how you slice it, what happened? Yeah, you, the you market. Lost you lost equity. Yeah. I lost equity. Okay, I, now you can't can regain. No, 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 I lost equity. I lost equity. If I want to sell it now, you can, if I want to realize right. it now, you, you I can, can gain the right. equity back. You can. You can right. regain. Yeah, we're not saying you can't regain. We didn't say this. Go. Now listen. You screw it up. You do have the. You do have the. You have the ability to regain it, but that's not a guarantee. We do know that the market in the last two years was the. It was hot. Yeah. Right. And if you miss that market, we don't know when that's coming back again. Nope. So there Correct. is no guarantee you're going to get back to that 190. We're not saying that you won't, but there's no guarantee. But I know uh, 12 months ago, 190 was there. Do you want to know the upside to this? Yeah. The upside to this is that it limited the amount of refinance I was able to take out. Mm -hmm. It controlled my payment, mm -hmm. and now I cash flow way better. Everything, yeah, exactly. everything happens for Absolutely. a reason, right? Yeah, so I, get, so I, clouds I agree. Are still and even though the interest rates went up in that time, mm -hmm. and I wasn't able to secure the rate that I thought I was going to secure in 2019, um, the the my my ca it limited the amount of money I could take back out. So I want to say something about that because I was a person I did bird before bird was even a name. Right. You know what right. I'm saying? The bird wasn't even a thing. So it's it's crazy. I'm mad. I'm like, damn, I missed out on that you opportunity. Should have right. gone on that one. Uh, but I on t shirt. But it scared me. So so people that's doing that's new to doing bird right. have to understand. You got to be careful because sure. I bird the shit out of everything, yep. and right. then when the market dropped. Yep. Shit, I, them houses was upside down. Well, the birth strategy relates on the flipping principle. Uh, yeah. Right. It, mm -hmm. it, 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 it is an absolute relation to the flipping principle because mm -hmm. the only way that you can that you can refinance out uh, is is if the market either stays stable or goes up. Mm -hmm. But if in the time that you've got, I mean, God forbid anybody tried to burn anything in the last three months. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, they've gone right. off a cliff right mm -hmm. now, and they ain't right. gonna be able to do it. Mm -hmm. And so it it burns. Why not? Sorry? Why, why, why won't they be able to do it? Um, because uh, the, um, the the market has slowed exponentially. So the value the rates less went up. Than, no, well, the rate, well, the, ra the rates have gone up, mm -hmm. which changed the payment. Mm -hmm. the, um, the, uh, the, the 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 sale price has slipped slightly, mm -hmm. not okay. not exponentially, <laughs> okay. but it has slipped slightly. Yeah. Um, and the market has slowed. Uh, well, I mean, I completely disagree. So equity has decreased. 100%. Is that what you're saying? No, I mean nah, because if, all, if anybody has tried to refinance, but in the area where he's saying you lost the burr, if, he, no. if he's saying if you tried to burr in the last three months, he, he's saying that because he's saying when you all right, no, you your analytics, your analytics would have said that you would have had a better number. Yes. Than you're getting right now. There you go. And I, but now mm -hmm. in right. three months, it's not going to be as dramatic as my two and a half year spread, which included a global pandemic. Yeah, but I still think you increased. I, I mean, in 2018. Oh no, no, now, listen, the I, I still, I still made money on the deal. I just didn't yeah. make as much. Yeah. Mm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. What were you saying? So, if we're talking about burring, then we're talking about paying an appraiser. Then we're talking about a person that can go out six to twelve months for comps mm -hmm. and to get the value. Mm -hmm. So if you try to burn now, the only biggest difference is the three percent no increase. No. Yes. Because there's other sales. So if new sales are coming now, they can't they can't just skip the sales recent that's recent and they don't say have to. Well, what's well you would have to to go back six to twelve well, months. But you don't have so to if you have if you have if you have recent you well, still have recent and current sales well, we just talked about, that support the same values that were in the market six months well, ago. That's, that's, well, what can't well, be the case with his. What's, no, what's, I didn't what's, say it was no, with no, no, his. No, no, he no, what no, Justin no, said what's, was what's God really? forbid anybody has tried to burn the last three months. So that's what I was challenging, not specifically Justin said. Well he's saying that for the same reason. Because in the last in the since when he's saying May or June, we all know that the market has slowed, softened, right? So values are not increasing at the rate that they were. We starting to see different stuff. We starting to see selling concessions, which didn't exist. That's taking down the uh, the actual value of the house, right? Uh, we starting to see uh, people lowering costs, lowering their price. We, right. we didn't see this in the last two years. So yeah, all these things uh, affected the amount that you can. Refinance, but you know, you got weight on the market. Yeah, but appraisers were also 
not looking at the close sales price of some of these crazy cash over. They didn't even care. They were yeah. looking at the list price. Yeah. And now they're looking at the close sales price, which is below the list price. So the appraisal guidelines never spiked and came down. The appraisal guidelines stayed stable and actually went down. So there, I, I, from an appraisal standpoint, I don't think you really got any benefit from the spike that happened in the in the first and second quarter of this year. Right. Personally. Well, yes, you did, because appraisers before were not about. going out 12 months. They were not doing that. When I found out that an tw- appraiser was going 12 months, I was like, what? Yeah, but, you, but you didn't get and over a mile? But you didn't get the benefit of the spike because they're going out 12 months. You didn't get the benefit of the spike. I the most definitely did. I got the benefit hey, of that. Hey, you know what? These are really rich people problems when you got <laughs> the 30, you got a $36,000 home that's, that's worth $140,000. I don't see nothing negative about no, that. No, yeah, but so I need to move. We gonna move. Where you could have did better. Oh, no, no, no. I need at to that time. I, I mean, I'm look. I, well, right. on. You haven't heard the best bit. <laughs> okay. So when we uh, in all of this, I, I said one of the good bits was that the amount we could take out was less. Mm-hmm. So our payment ended up being less. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But the rents exactly increased went up yeah. right exponentially. Mm-hmm. Right. So I thought I was going to rent for eight fifty. I now rent for nine twenty five. And I thought I was going to rent for six hundred. I now rent for seven seventy five. Mm-hmm. Right. And that means that my cash flow on the overall property far outweighs anything. I'm whole on the money. The seller's going to be paid off when we close next week. It's all okay. It's all fine. It's a healthier yeah. investment now. Uh, yeah. Uh, a long yeah. term. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, in the spring, we'll do some landscaping and pretty it up. Yeah. She's a beauty. So, and, and you pointed out something that's good. So, some people invest for cash flow. Some people invest to flip. And that's where the equity matter. Oh, I missed out on a 190. Now I'm getting 140. But if your cash flow increase... Who cares what the ARV is, whether it's 190 or 140? If you're burning. you're getting you. more... Yeah, but still, if your goal is to hold it long term, the more cash flow you have, the better. Like Justin, the just safer explain, you are. He, if if you if you were planning on burning a two hundred thousand dollars house to get one hundred and sixty thousand dollars out of that to go do the rest of your deals, but now right. it's a hundred and sixty thousand dollars house, and now you're only getting uh, eighty plus forty, one hundred and twenty eight. Right. You know what I'm saying? That's a, you lost. That's a lot of money that buying power that you lost. Thirty six thousand. This, 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 this is where I'm going to play my really yeah. my my trump card. <laughs> this is where I'm going to play my. This is where I'm going to flip the bird at everybody. Yeah. Drop the mic and walk out. No. <laughs> <laughs> this is where everybody used to laugh at me mm-hmm. when I used to talk about analyzing deals. Mm-hmm. I would my buy box, and it's on a slide in a class that I teach. My buy box. Is I won't buy it unless I can buy it and rehab it for sixty percent of the ARV. Oh, we do sixty-five. And, yeah. and, and yeah. everybody's I always like, "How do you find it? How do you do it? That's madness." My argument being, you. my lender will lend me eighty percent, so I've got a twenty percent hedge. Yep. Mm-hmm. So on when all is said and done, my seller finance this this property cost me six hundred dollars in earnest money. Right. That's it, and I used the HELOC to refinance it. From your house. From my own house, mm-hmm. my private residence. Mm-hmm. That's going back. Mm-hmm. I own this property free and clear. I'm pulling money out of it. Not as much as I thought. Mm-hmm. Boo-hoo, I'll have to not get the supercharged Range Rover. Well, you may not get. be able to buy the next investment. $36,000 is a lot of money it, to not be able to $36,000 is a lot of I money. I can't wait till these cameras go so I can show y'all all something. Like, this is ridiculous. It, no, this whole I, conversation. I'm not. Tell us why. <laughs> I'm, <laughs> listen, I, I'm, 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 I'm bummed. Yeah, okay, $36,000 is a lot of money, mm-hmm. but I wouldn't have realized $36,000 on my refinance because I can only take 8% out. I would have been able to get that $36,000 and go make $36 more thousand dollars. So that's a lot for me. Oh Terrific. God. Well, I'm going to go make $36,000 on the one I just bought. But my point being, as it turned out, with everything that happened between buying it mm-hmm. and then getting it performing as an investment, a global pandemic, people going bankrupt, all this shit going on, I'm whole, I'm good. I made money, and I'm going to make money in perpetuity. And in 30 years' time, when I sell it, this conversation won't even matter. It will. I'm it going to explain to everybody why. <laughs> okay. All right. So. Jesus. Uh, they stamp it. A hundred dollars. No, I want to tell because y'all, y'all not going to be, because listen, so we real. need people to really understand what, right. what happened. So look, if you, all right, Justin, so you take a 37, you did, you weren't able to get an additional 36,000. 
But in the, you still got a healthy uh, investment. It's not. There's nothing wrong with that. Thanks. But you got a hundred dollars more per month in rent. That's twelve hundred dollars a year. How many years is it going to take you to get to thirty six thousand dollars? And so John Kasnowski well, taught yeah, me something. You, 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 you forgot the to interest. Yeah, you, 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 I don't add the, add the interest on the twelve hundred dollars. Matter of fact, add twenty five percent interest on the twelve hundred dollars, which we know that, that he's not getting. Because he's but he's people that are holding rent. in cash flow, they're obviously taking a less aggressive approach. Uh, like that's wait, already the. Do you point. remember the conversation I had with you? Yeah. So so uh, there was another opportunity that that, that crossed my desk, and uh, I, I I felt like I you know because I was a little gun shy. After losing thirty six thousand dollars, apparently, <laughs> right? So I, I, so, I went to, so, so I was I was looking at my I was looking at my refinance options on it, and I was looking at, at all of it, and I had an option for a um, a, a twenty year amortization with a lower interest rate, mm -hmm. or a, or a thirty year amortization with a higher interest rate, but ultimately a lower payment. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Reggie and I said, well, "What would you do?" And Reggie said to me, I would take the 30 year in a heartbeat because you get better cash flow. It's mm -hmm. going to be paid down regardless of so who cares. Right. Mm -hmm. So I think right. there has to be an element of what are you looking for from the investment? Yes, the equity at one point in time was bigger than it is now. But ultimately, what I have to look at is what can I do right now in my moment, in my market, to maximize what I've got right in front of me? There's nothing I could have done differently to realize that 190. So sitting and licking my wounds is is not an option. Got you. Right. But you still want to explain. I agree. You have to be able to uh, adapt and move on. Mm -hmm. Period. Yeah. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to make him feel uh, any worse than he's feeling. I just but we want people to uh, understand. I don't what know. I'm just feeling that way. He's definitely the dad horse type of person. I remember, I, remember, I, remember, I remember the podcast we did on your birthday where you two yeah. were like a cat and dog. Oh, so I thought God. you two were going to like climb across the table or something. No, yeah. no, no, no. I mean, it's it's uh, it's all in good fun, but it's it's the truth though. I do, I, I, I do understand what what you say. There was an opportunity to realize mm -hmm. more out of the property. But there will be an opportunity to realize more at that property in the future. It's so I got like five more questions oh, on my paper we that we haven't even had. Yeah, we got to like come two. back. We don't yeah. even have time. Yeah. What were you getting ready to say? I was getting ready to say. So Janita's on that now. In terms of, uh, and you know, she's. Put, I agree. She, she's uh, more aggressive. I'm aggressive, but I'm not aggressive. Right. Aggressive. And uh, Johnny is aggressive, aggressive. So she's on uh, the bird now. You know right. what I'm saying? Which I, I'm telling y'all. So this is not. So you just started investing in 2018. Mm -hmm. I've been in, investing since 2005. I started burning in 06. You know so I'm, I'm back so, on it. So I'm, it's time. I, I have a, a different. You was investing. <laughs> so we got a different understanding of <laughs> right. what could potentially happen when right. you're burring. So when I was hearing everybody burr. I wanted I was, everything. I wanted everything free and clear. Yeah. I didn't. I don't. I don't have mortgages on my on my houses. Doesn't mean that it was necessarily the the right uh, decision, right? Because you could have. When I do go back and look at, it, I'm like, well, I could have uh, burned a lot of this stuff right. and went and bought more stuff. But I was buying more stuff at higher prices. Right. So I don't know that it was a good time. You know what I mean? So it's it's different. Uh, so, it's more than one way to skin a cat. For, right. So, you know so, what I'm so, yeah. so how how is what I did any different than somebody who bought an investment property in two thousand five and uh, then tried to sell it in two thousand eight? Uh, shit. I so, would, so for me, it was way different. So, so if I would have known what was going to happen, nobody sold in 08. Everybody just sold walked everything. away from it. I would have sold it. everything. <laughs> I would have if I would have had because so they, it's different. Didn't pack up. They right. Left. I would have. I would have <laughs> sold. I would have sold everything if I could have. Like if I could go. If I would have known what was going to happen. Right. You. And you, I know we talk about holding on to the properties. Right. It wouldn't have made any sense because we're just getting back to the back. So in the last two years, so 2008, it took us 12 years to just get back to the value. Mm -hmm. And then the interest rates was high as hell back then. You were in arms. Uh, so you were, you may have been making a hundred dollars a month on your rentals. But that, you, that's but, not good but, enough. But but hold, holding it holding it over time meant mm. meant you would have been able to refinance when the interest rates changed. Uh, you we're talking about to... how long from eight? When we we, we talking about we 10 start years coming? Still. No, we start coming back in sixteen seventeen. But not back to the levels that we were in 06 you, and 07. But you could have refinanced sixteen seventeen. You would have lost. Yeah, so, so, think about the think about no, the pay downs. Think about the equity pay downs. Think so, about so, start refinancing in twelve and been good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Twelve before and every mortgage payment increased your net worth. crazy. I think that. It's Hold not on, areas so I got in question. Detroit that I do agree with, maybe Detroit and Pontiac, but it's nowhere. It's not, they are. Where? 
the values Park, didn't just Oak, stay Oak completely Park, down. Yeah. Okay, so hold on. So in Oak Park, so in oh Oak Park in oh eight. What you brought in Oak Park? What you brought for forty thousand in Oak Park? He bought in Oak Park, and and I sold his. Remember, that's how we met. We met off of off of Al's. He sold that at one forty. Mm-hmm. How much is that house worth now? Two ten. Yeah. So go get out of here. No way. But it wasn't worth two ten in two thousand and eight. Oh, well, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to throw down the house that I bought in 1998 for twenty two thousand pounds. It's now uh, worth eight hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Eight hundred eighty thousand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. whatever, what, whatever you want to say, it goes up over time, and holding over time is the way to create generational wealth. So what other questions you got? You're good. You could. <laughs> you could if you don't. So listen, if you're in a house, another one. So we just that was a good. One right, so yeah. we, if you're if you had a mortgage of one hundred and twenty thousand dollars, paying about ten seventy eight in two thousand eight, right. and then and you go into you wouldn't have been buying a hundred thousand dollar house. In, what area are you talking about? Two thousand eight. Come on, Pontiac. You I, wouldn't buy a hundred thousand dollar house in Pontiac in 08? Lies. That's my Ooh. that was my market. I mean, in 08? Yeah, in, in 08? Pontiac. Yes, that's my market. Man, I'm gonna pull you ain't gonna be able to tell me nothing. No, about but that. Al got another good one because the first house he had. But you put a hundred thousand in Pontiac in 08. You got ripped get, off. Get, more than, get, no, you did get. not. That's I made my. Yeah. Uh, hold on. And you so, bought the historic so understand district. This. No, it, no, so this historic district right, is gonna be three hundred thousand plus in Pontiac. Drink. This is 08. I can give you address. I can give you address. What's your home? You said uh uh. Bungalows, ranches, in anything on the district. north side. No, this it's no historic district on the north side of Pontiac. No, but I'm saying you paid a hundred thousand in 08 for a no, house. No, I'm refi Burr. So oh, we're Burr okay. houses. All right. No, so, I thought you said you're paying a hundred thousand. No, you're talking no, about investment. No, I'm saying no. I'm I'm asking you as an investor. Oh no, did you pay a hundred thousand? No, we're in talking 08? about because I was about to say you deserved it. No, we're talking about investor Burr. So we're talking about the Burr. So you can remember it was a little bit different. Too. So right. the bird you used to be able to used to be able to refi a hundred percent. You can uh, refi a hundred percent. You can yeah, refi ninety five percent. Ninety percent. Yeah, exactly. Right. See well, we, so we no, no, no. see look look we and we, then two thousand eight happened and kapoof boom. Then right. we we so talking saying, about you just now getting back to them values though. Like but just we, now two well, years ago. We, but we in talking area of the country. A couple things. Uh, yeah, but in in Michigan. But we talking a couple different things. Some people just made some badass decisions. Back then, mm-hmm. just to be honest, like yeah, yeah, yeah. if you tell if you tell me borrowing a hundred percent against a property was never the smart play, unless you was no, smart, unless you well, if unless I you it, unless you unless you look at it this way, I'm gonna borrow a hundred percent from this one and buy one free and there clear you go. and keep it free. There you go. Clear. Now you're looking at your overall mm-hmm. portfolio mm-hmm. is worth two million mm-hmm. and only owe eight hundred thousand on it, right? right? Yeah. And I'm cash flowing positive on a collective. I'm not focused on what just one individual. So that's why the bird doing. makes sense, right? Right. But that's what I'm trying to say. So I was uh, petrified of the, when I start hearing about the bird. I'm like, I'm staying far away from that shit because right. I saw what can happen, the negative that can happen with the bird. He's using the sixty percent. He's the first person I heard use sixty five. I thought we were uh, we just cautious changed it today. at sixty five. We changed we, today to sixty. Yeah. Yeah. So we <laughs> normally use sixty five percent. Everybody else use seventy. Mm. No, yeah, most is... people, 65 has traditionally been your safe number because a lot of investors will give you up to 70. Yeah. Yeah. Most so people we stick 70. at 65, Six... and today we went to 60. 60... 60, 60 gives me a 10% contingency as mm-hmm. well. 60 sure. and 65 mm-hmm. give you the opportunity. Real estate don't change as quick as the stock market. I agree. If you start I seeing you depression it. in the market... You can you can say okay I want to sell or I can afford I can afford to hold this through the next downturn mm-hmm. and you can get out so values are here you at sixty percent of value values start coming down you can make some decisions and still get out at a profit before it's to that which break, I could have done a loss S- yeah S- exactly you could have did it in two thousand and seven but you're gun shy yeah. now because of the decisions you didn't make before right no 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 I'm saying in two thousand seven I had somebody that came to buy my whole portfolio right. everything but they were giving me less now so I didn't uh, I was still at eighty percent on my um, on my birds mm-hmm. I was at I didn't go to hundred percent on them right I was at eighty percent. So when they was coming, they was only giving me like uh, between that eighty to ninety percent, but trying to stay around the eighty-five percent. And you felt like you lost equity. I fe- well, I felt like they was <laughs> still taking about money, equity, right? Yeah. Right. So I'm like, I'm like, no, I'm like, I'm not gonna do that. Until you you know right. 
And that, but that's when I was about to realize it, though. I, 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 I understand. <laughs> equity, equity, is, equity is fabulous. Equity right. is great. As far as I'm concerned, equity is one of the six streams, one of the six property centers you can get from a property. Mm -hmm. But it's only real when you realize it. And so ultimately, what's on paper, it doesn't really matter. To me, cash flow and what I can take out is more important. So your projections don't matter? You don't project? No, my, no my projections, they, they absolutely do matter because that dictates what the, the cash I can take yeah. out. So if you if you projected 200000 and you come back with one sixty, you am fucked I, up. Am I, no, I didn't fuck up. The world changed exponentially. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying you fucked up. You're fucked up. Like if, no, if I you am still am I, am I, I you didn't mess am up I, because you never finished. you I'm fucked up. So if I were projected, you business. still made money at the one six. No, if I needed forty thousand, if I so people make business decisions based on their projections, not just in real estate, in every right. business. Right, and if the, the projection changes, projection comes, comes they in are fucked up. But not if you still made, up. if you still made profit at the one sixty. You not messed up. Y'all not a, listening to the, the what thing. I'm saying. I know what you're saying. What but I'm What saying. I'm saying is, you're looking at it. My thing is, I'm not counting the loss if I never physically had the two hundred thousand. Oh, right. So, don't we always so, talk about loss? Hold on. When we when we do, I our, didn't lose it if I didn't have it. Listen, when we talk about our projections in real estate <laughs> and right. sales, I'm because I'm gonna ask him. When we talk about uh, loss opportunity. Yeah. When we talk about loss opportunity in, in real estate, we do talk meaning about people that yeah. you had the opportunity to sell a house to yep. or uh, uh, yep. sell a house for, yep. and you didn't get it, so yep. you lost that opportunity. Yep. Right? Mm -hmm. This is the same but thing. No, it's so, not the same so thing listen, at all. The it's listen. so far from the same thing. Listen. Oh, my God. Listen. All right, listen. listen. The, 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 there, is, there is a massive difference there. The right. lost opportunity of you having a prospecting activity that you can't close mm -hmm. is very different to a global pandemic that turns up and fucks up your world. But the, the global pandemic, the pandemic actually up, helped it, 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 the world. It did not hurt crazy. The pandemic didn't hurt us at all. It well, helped but, us. But we got to think about it, his it, it area. Did, in, my, in, in what I was doing, it did, because the guy that was going to lend me the money <laughs> then started lending money on other things and didn't lend me the money and left me holding the can. But then your shit shot up another 20000 because it probably was 170 and it shot up to 190. True so story. it made it And back then it up. shot down to 140. But like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, well, we're the appraisal. The appraisal, yeah. We're going to go to market. <laughs> but but, but to, my, to my point, the person that you're prospecting to mm -hmm. was still going to go buy something regardless of what happened. For sure. So when I'm talking, when you're talking about lost income in terms of of, of, of inactivity mm -hmm. and poor prospecting or poor skill or poor activity, that's entirely different than market conditions. And, and maybe... Maybe, maybe some poor judgment mm -hmm. on my part about not actioning money quicker mm -hmm. than I did. I'll, and I I'll, learned. I deal with that. And I learned from it. I learned from it, mm -hmm. and and it, it meant I didn't release as much money. But there's a big difference between having a lost opportunity in terms of a skill based or prospecting based lack of activity or lack of skill versus um, trying to exercise. A, a, a cash out in a market and trying to time the market. Mm. Big That's difference. All right, that is a wrap. What were the other five questions you had? <laughs> no, <laughs> yeah, we still got to ask them. I mean, another. Actually, yeah, we, we can just bring. We just, yeah, we can just go to the next episode. We can keep them on. But as far as this yeah, first part one, we are wrapped up and done. Monday, Monday, Monday.